Hey guys, it's Layla. Welcome back to the channel. And today I'm bringing you a plant video, obviously. On this channel, we're all about nurturing and growing things. And that also includes my plant babies. I get a lot of questions around my plants. There are new people constantly joining us on the channel. Welcome. Um, and a lot of you ask me questions about the plants. Some of you have asked me if they are real. Which means you haven't checked out any of my plant videos, so please do so. I think they're there. Um, I haven't filmed from this direction in a long time, so if they're not there, then they're definitely there. <laughs> I've got seven tips and troubleshootings to help you guys through the winter with your plants. To give you a bit of a background, I've been keeping plants personally, as in on my personal person in my personal room. Um, for about seven years now. My mum's been keeping plants for as long as I can remember. So just being around plants has been something that has been part and parcel of uh, my life. And um, I like keeping plants. I love being a plant mom. It's just such an amazing way for me to like do something for myself in like a selfless way. It's a bit of an oxymoron, um, or a paradox actually I would say is the better word. Anyway, <laughs> before I bore you guys to death. So, tips and tricks, let's jump right in. Okay guys, so the first tip I have for you is all about pruning. This is the perfect time of year to really prune. I usually speak about pruning a lot, um, both personally in my personal life, um, and pruning, you know, through my plants. And of course, generally you prune throughout the year, but in this season is where a lot of your plants are resting. A lot of them are dormant. They're kind of catching up from the summer, spring, where they're like, you know, going at 100, making new leaves, making new, like, I don't know, flowers, depending on the type of plant that you have. And this is the perfect time. So, Nabija, <laughs> as you can see, um, during this time of year, a lot of her older leaves start to transition onto the next life. And I actually kept this one because I wanted to show you what it looks like. Um, but the leaves will fully yellow before it starts to like wrinkle and die completely. And I will also show you on Sahar. I'll, I'll get it. <laughs> but um, this is also my other Monstara. And as you can see, she too has a yellowing leaf. So that leaf has reached the end of its cycle. And essentially it needs to be pruned. So if you pay attention, you will see that a lot of your plants have old bits that needs to be assisted, you know. Um, and one of the main reasons why it's really important to prune around this time is that, like I said, your plants are recovering. And so you don't want it to exert any energy in any direction where it's not really necessary. So you don't want your plant to continue to like feed and like you know, try to energize a leaf that's literally just done for. Um, and that's a great segue to life, okay? Prune your life, okay? Habits, habits that don't require your energy, let them go. People that don't require your energy, let them go. So you come flourish, you know? So nice, flourish. <laughs> um, so what you wanna do is actually pick up a really good pair of gardening shears. So these are mine. This is what my shears look like. And um, it doesn't, oh, Nabi just trying to take on the shine, darling. Um, I hope you guys can see it, but yeah. I picked these up from home base. And these are the kind of shears that lock and they open up like that. This is a really, really good quality shares. And um, I actually also use these for flowers. So whenever I get flowers, I use these to like trim them every few days to keep them nice and fresh. But you wanna invest in a good quality pair of shares that you can use to go around and prune your babies. You can actually use a really good pair of scissors as well. Just make sure that you disinfect your um, equipment Tip number two is all about keeping your leaves nice and shiny. Okay, look at that bad boy. 
painting. And you want to do that for one main reason, and that is during the winter time, there just simply isn't enough sunlight coming into your space. Your plants are already kind of like struggling to photosynthesize, and if there's a lot of dust and grime left on the leaves, then it's harder for the sun to reach the full surface area of each leaf, um, which means your, your plant's not going to get as much energy as it needs. And if you remember me saying it already, your plant is already trying to like, reserve you know what I mean it's trying to like simmer down so definitely go around a lot more often so I would say in the summertime I probably wipe my leaves maybe like every month maybe month and a half not as frequent however in the winter time every couple of weeks I will go through and I will wipe down each one of my leaves if you're interested I do have a DIY that you can check out to make a solution that will keep your leaves shiny but it will also help with any like bugs so it will deter bugs and flies and things like that definitely check it out it's a good one, okay? Next tip is move your plants around. If you don't do this already, this is a good habit to get into. Usually in the summertime, you already have your plants, or when you bring your plants home, I should say, you already put them in the best positions for their lighting needs. Um, in this time, okay, <laughs> where there isn't a lot of sunlight, what I like to do is I move the majority of my plants that require a high amount of sunshine. So all my tropical plants predominantly sit um, in this cove, which is where my south facing window is, and they stay there all throughout the year. The other thing that I like to do, so for example, my fiddle leaf fig, I will move it to my north facing window because in the morning there's usually like a really, um, bright beam of sunlight so what I do is that the night before I like to move it to the north face and window so that it can soak up that kind of you know early morning sun and then I move it back to where it belongs and then it can have like nice diffused light throughout the day um the other thing that I like to do is all my low light plants that are like dotted in the different corners of my room they are usually fine in the summertime you know they get shade but they also get like a lot of diffused light in the winter that is not the case so I like to move those closer to my southern face and window so usually they all just chill there and then it also gives me the opportunity to kind of like turn on my humidifier in one spot and ensure that all my you know all the needs of everybody's kind of being met and then also when my humidifier is not even on because they're all clustered together the humidity in that area is slightly more raised than if they weren't hope that makes sense okay also another tip is um depending on your lighting levels and needs as you can see my bedroom's quite bright and today th there's literally no sunshine so <laughs> my bedroom is naturally quite light and airy so i have never had to use a grow light um and actually in my whole entire life i don't think my mom has ever bought a grow light before but that could just be because that we've always kind of been somewhere where we have ample like diffused light even in the winter time if you or if your apartment your bedroom your dining room wherever it is that you're keeping your plants if you do not have enough lights especially in the winter time you might want to invest in some grow lights um like i said i don't have any personal experience so i can't recommend any particular grow lights that you should use however i will say if you're going to get one make sure it's a full spectrum light so full spectrum to just ensure that your plants are getting everything that they need yeah that's an option that you can definitely look at point number four is that when it's cold as you know especially if you're in the uk we have central heating so your heating's on straight away the humidity in your room dramatically drops okay humidity has dramatically dropped and if you have plants that require high amounts of humidity for example my calathea my calathea is very big now by the way guys um massive 
okay it's so freaking big anyway plants like the calathea require a, a high amount of humidity which just doesn't exist in my space in the winter time because my radiators are on more often so there are essentially like three things you can do i've mentioned one of them already which is to group your plants that require a lot of humidity together when you group them together the area that they are in naturally the humidity will rise in that area the next thing you can do is mist your plants more frequently so if you usually mist your plants once a week uh maybe once every other week you might want to try and do it maybe every other day you could possibly do it daily you know it just depends on like what works for you i whenever i see my water bottle i will grab it and i will mist all my plants even though I have a humidifier. Humidifiers can be expensive, but they can also be super cheap. Um, but I have a Lavoit um, humidifier, which is actually quite expensive. It's like almost a hundred pounds. Um, and it's a large capacity, capacity humidifier. So when I turn it on, it's able to kind of like, you know, raise the humidity throughout my entire room, which is quite big. Can buy a smaller, cheaper humidifier, which will have like a smaller tank. So the water will run out more um quicker so you have to change it more often but that's completely fine do you know what i mean like if it's something you're willing to do and you have time to do then that's fine and what you can do is just group once again group your plants together turn on your little humidifier and you're good to go and if you do have a humidifier similar to mine where it's a little bit more complex what you can do is set the humidity so i like to set my humidity to like between 50 and 60 um and so whenever the humidity in the room actually drops below that, the humidifier will come on until the humidity picks up, then it'll shut off. So yeah, going by that, it can last me for literally like a week when I top it up and when I fill it. So I hope that helps something for everybody's budget to go. Um, but like I said, if you don't want to go out of your way and do any of those things, you can just literally grab your water bottle and mist your plants on a daily basis. Okay guys, so my next point is probably one that most of us are aware of, but um, might not be implementing as well as we possibly could be, which is that when it's colder, um, you need to water your plants way less because moisture in the soil doesn't dissipate as quickly as it does in the warmer months. So when you water your plants, the soil actually stays moist much longer than it would when it's hot. So I have a moisture meter that I actually barely ever use, but I do own a moisture meter. If you are new, being a new plant mama or plant papa, um, <laughs> I would say definitely get one of these um, and test the moisture of your soil of your plants before you consider watering them. Even if you've left your plant for like two weeks and you're thinking, yep, definitely has to be dry now, I'm gonna water it. Just pop this in there to double check. Um, I've gotten to the point where I know my plants well enough that I do it by eye, I play it by eye. So a good example is my Monstaras. What I do is when it's cold, I wait until the leaves droop. <laughs> As you can see, the leaves are not drooping. So I watered this two weeks ago and the leaves still aren't drooping. So I have no intention of watering this at all. When the leaves begin to like actually physically droop, when the plant is drooping, that's the point I'll go back in and water it. And um, the, the difficulty <laughs> with that is obviously you don't want the plant to droop for too long before you actually water it because that can cause long long term damage. So get a moisture meter basically is what I'm saying. Don't do what I do, do what I say. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if you're a pro, then of course you can go ahead and do that. But that's what I do for my Monstaras. That's what I also do for my Hoya. So I'm going to grab my Hoya quickly and show you. So this is my Hoya Cornosa Compacta. Okay, it's also known as a Hindu rope plant. Um, this plant actually holds water in its leaves. So 
it doesn't need to be watered often. In the summertime, I water it quite often, but especially when it comes to the winter, I don't. And a good example of um, when it's best to water this plant is that I like to let the bottom leaves get soft and wrinkly. So when they're soft and wrinkly, it means that they're no longer holding on to water and it needs to be watered. But I take it a step further because as you can see, it's grown quite a lot. So I actually wait until the whole of the top leaves, okay, have wilted. So, um, <laughs> not wilted, but have softened and gone a bit wrinkly. It's really hard to describe. And that's why I don't recommend it for someone who isn't necessarily like pro, okay, or plant bay, like myself, okay. If I was to miss this opportunity to water it and I left it too long, the leaves would actually drop off. Um, and so, yes, once again, why I'm stressing the fact that it's really good to get a moisture meter if you're starting out. If you've owned your plants for like a few years, you know, you kind of know them a bit better, then it's easier for you to kind of, I guess, play it by ear like I do in the colder months. Okay guys, so my next tip is actually related to the previous one um, and it's all about your soil um, staying like damp for longer. So when the soil stays damp for longer, what can actually happen is that you can get white mould and white mould is actually caused essentially by an excess of humidity. <laughs> So um, as much as you want to have the right humidity in your room, too much humidity can actually be detrimental to your plants as well. I mean, white mold isn't going to kill your plant. However, like it's just not the nicest thing to see. Um, and you don't want to really be like panicky, panicky, panicky about it. Um, a good way to avoid white mold is to improve the circulation in your room. So um, I don't know about you guys, but even in the colder months, I still open my window in the morning to get fresh air. Even though that fresh air is like hella cold air, <laughs> I still open my window for like a couple of hours. Um, you know, crack it open at the top or something like that. I like to make sure that there's always a good circulation in my bedroom. Um, you know, for me, just for my personal, personal, personal self, and also for the plants. So doing that, just getting a good circulation in your room will help to reduce um, white mould coming onto the surface of your soils. And in, if it has already happened to you, if it's something that you already have, what you can do is actually just like pick off the surface soil where the mould is and you can sprinkle some cinnamon powder all over and that will stop the white mold from returning. You don't need to like repot the plant or anything because the mold literally only sits or grows on the surface of the plant. Um, once you do that, that particular plant, just make sure that it's receiving good circulation. Um, I wanted to bring this up because it is something that generally tends to happen in the colder months. You know, of course, I'm telling you, spritz your plant every day, uh, put your humidifier on, do this, do that. And it's quite possible that you could get white mold if your room just doesn't have like, you know, the right balance. So I hope that is helpful. If you've got white mold, do not panic. Just take it off, um, sprinkle the cinnamon and just ensure that you have good circulation around your, around your plant babies, okay? Good. And my final, final tip, number seven, seven being the number of completion and my favorite number in the whole world. The final tip is a simple one, which is essentially just check on your plants more often. Um, like I said, a lot of your plants are like hibernating, they're dormant, they're chilling. Um, but now is a good time just to make sure that they're actually okay. So just check them often. If something needs to be pruned, prune it. If there's a bit of white mold, you catch it quicker. Do you know what I mean? If you're just checking on your plants more frequently, if the leaves need dusting, you're going to see that and dust it. Um, if there's anything just happening with the plant, you can be a bit more vigilant, especially around this time. And yeah, that's why it's the final, you know, I feel like it just rounds off everything together. I hope you guys found this video really helpful and all that good stuff. Shout out to all my plant mamas and papas out there. <laughs> If you can't tell, I really love my plant babies, so 
I enjoy making um, videos like this and I enjoy hearing you guys get back to me telling me that my tips have actually helped you. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, make sure you do because every now and then I do put out like random um, tips, okay, for your plants. Like watering your plants with rice water. And yeah, I will catch you guys in my next video. Mwah. <laughs> Bye.